Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different tabletop game project every weekday at 1.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and give my honest thoughts on how the Kickstarter is being ran. So if you enjoy that kind of weird, wild content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I'm trying to reach 9,000 subscribers to celebrate my nine-year anniversary of making YouTube content. But right now, I'm very excited to be checking out Dragon Bond Lords of Vala. So, Dragon Bond Strategy Asymmetric Board Game Plus Free Expansion Raid as a Dragon or General Raising Army. So, uh, I'm seeing minis here, I'm seeing a big board here. I'd like to know the player count, that'd be a good one to know here. Uh, but, asymmetric board game, I like mentioning that. Free expansion, now that's something that I, you don't typically see as well, which I think will uh, catch your interest. But, I will be honest, from this out, from like this perspective right here, I can barely really make out much. But, I see the minis, let's check it out, see how it's going. It's already raised $95,000. Uh, Raid is a Dragon or General Raising Armies. Concepts from Magic the Gathering slash D&D Artists. Uh, Raid is a Dragon or General Raising Armies. Okay, so concepts from Magic... So is this game based off Magic the Gathering slash Dungeons and Dragons art? Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what that is. I see it's going to come from different languages of the languages, but as always, when I go into the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Hopefully you can convince me of at least one of those three late. Now, let's go! Asymmetric board game. Combined in a vast universe filled to the brim with new creatures, cultures, and storied heroes involved in a deep and intriguing... Okay. Uh... Okay. If we are to survive the there dragons, we, we must make our magic stronger. Every 27 years, the dragons fly in from the Red Moon, searching for one thing only. Vala. It only exists on Valerna, and to take it is to destroy us. Valerna is at war. Our resources are depleted. Now we must protect ourselves from this new threat. But our greatest danger hides our greatest hope. And the Dragon Bond can rewrite the future. There we go. So, I always feel like sometimes you can go way too heavy into the theme in your video without getting to the components. And this is what I want to see. Oh, is an asymmetric strategy. Like, look at that. Okay, that looks nifty. Little player area, tokens, markers, lots of stuff. on. Okay, this looks solid. Uh, I just like to, I like to see when you're talking about theme and then you're interweaving the theme with the components or with the gameplay. I like that better, personally. But I'm very interested. What do you think? Would you rather hear just about the theme, or would you rather just see theme and gameplay slash components, or would you rather just see gameplay game player components and just uh, not see about the theme? Or does it vary from game to game? Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. What is the right way? Hmm. Expanding Dragon Bond Universe. Hot minis. With a bespoke AI system to Ooh. accommodate smaller groups and solo mode. Oh. You can choose oh. to control it. Okay, I want to go back to that. That, I like the fact they, they mentioned that. Once again, maybe even mentioned at the very beginning, one to four. So this looks like the kind of AI system that I like. Like, this looks pretty interesting right here. Uh, they get their own board. Awesome. Solo mode. You can choose to control a general. Zooming in on the minis, I will say. Uh, I thought the minis looked okay from the outside, but when you zoom in, like, look at the level of detail and the size. Uh, this is looking good. I like these minis. For a dragon in a race Ooh. to gather the most power through. And I like what you did there as well. You're telling me, you know, you're going to get different cards. You're going to get a different board with different trackers. Yeah, look at that. Different trackers right down there. I'm getting a little bit of a vast in the crystal caverns style feel that I was not getting before, but that gets me really excited. Uh, Gather the most okay. power through Bala. Every round is a prediction as a deck is built using the planned actions by every player. Okay. When a player passes, the deck is revealed and each card is resolved as they were played. Players with the most versatile strategy will gain huh. the upper hand. Dragon. That actually sounds kind of cool. So we're going to put action cards into the pot until eventually somebody passes. I, so I like what they did there. They showed me... You showed me how it works, gave me a little bit of a feel of the gameplay, but it's just a teeny tiny little nugget of it, uh, while also showing me how it plays out on the board. In soar, attack, and cause devastation, consuming precious Vala, destroying those that stand in the way. Generals raise armies to command, battling through... Oh, so you, there's dragons fight. So thematically, there's like giants dragon fighting, but I might be the character who's like, we gotta stop these damn dragons because they're gonna ravage our city. I like that. I like that. That sounds cool. Expand and reign. 
Both generals and dragons have the same goal. Collect power. The first player to gather 10 power tokens triumphs. It won't be easy, but you can use Maybe power to cast unique Vala cards, Ooh. bringing... Wait, 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 I want to read that. So I'm seeing a good deal of text on that card, which I like as well. Um, okay, back to Play. Down. Beware the new iconic dragon bond mechanic. For if a general bonds with a dragon, a unique character ability Ooh. will be enabled for the remainder of the game. Okay. And you will win or lose together. Oh! It's okay. Now that is the kind of thing I want to see spotlighted very cleanly, very clearly in your video, because that's a cool thing. Like, that's cool. Like, oh, this is, we're all punching each other, and all of a sudden we had a bond, and now, like, we're working together, and I'm wondering if maybe if it's, like, the third and fourth place people work together. I, I, like, that's, that's intriguing. That's cool. Really crafted miniatures, highly detailed art. And intriguing mechanics by veteran artists and designers in oh the industry. Oh my goodness, those are sick painted. By pledging in our Kickstarter today, you can enhance your game with a free copy of Armies of Blood and Dreams. Oh yeah, expansion! Place the cardboard units with... Okay, so I gotta tell you right now. I was already like, do, on the do I want it factor, like, yeah, this looks like a really cool game. I'd like to know more about it. But then I forgot, like, oh shoot, if I buy it now, it's a free expansion. I like how they did that. I, because I was already, like, let me know. I was kind of convinced just by the videos. Like, this, this looks like a damn fun game. It's got unique elements, uh, different feel. I like that. Highly detailed miniatures of the races and units from Dragon Bond, along with a lore guide for them. Expand player options with the expansions available in this campaign. Creatures of Valerna bring new monsters to the game with unique abilities. Available for everyone to hunt and collect power if they succeed. Oh! So that's like a big expansion. That adds a whole new mechanic to the game where now I'm not beating up on you or beating up on this. I'm going over here to defeat a monster. Okay, that's that. I like that. That's 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 hot. Legends of Valerna includes two new factions with Ooh. different dynamics. Oh my god, look at that guy! Six players. It also includes alternate generals with their unique Vala cards and miniatures. Become dragon bonded today to build... Okay. So we did what I like to call a little bit of minis porn. Where it's just like, oh my gosh, minis, 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 minis. But I like the fact it was at the end. Like, they they spotlighted how great the minis were at the beginning. Uh, but I feel like they really focused on the game at the beginning and not the minis. And I love seeing that because that's not what everybody an does. strategy, cast devastating spells, and emerge from battle okay. as the Lord of Vala. It was a bit on the longest side, but I, I thought that was a really well done video. I thought that was a great video. Uh, so, do I want it? Yeah. I think the video did its job. So, can you do it? How much is it? Let's get to it. So, first thing we always check, seven created. That's a nice warm security blanket. I can't open. Oh, why can't I right click? Uh, we got some people in here, collaborators. Awesome. Quite a few collaborators. Excellent. Which means we should have some good customer service. All that good stuff. Checking out previous projects. Dragon Brown, great waves of this. Uh, so, okay, so this is a whole different ball game. This looks like their first board, no, uh, their first board game. So it looks like they're primarily minis game. Okay, okay. So let's make sure their last minis, uh, weren't terribly deformed and people are complaining and starting fires in the comment section. 308 comments. Uh, probably not. Let's check this out real quick. Advanced mass production copy of the book on its way. Important effects from container shortages in China. Let's see how far apart those were. June 30th, July 29th. So monthly update. That's reasonable. And I don't see anyone with torches and pitchforks. Okay, so I don't think this one's out yet. But it, it, it doesn't look like there's anything amiss with it. Let's check out the last one. Updates. Make sure this thing got funded. Or make sure it got shipped out. Transmission. Books arriving in Europe. Uh, reports on their way. Uh, advanced mass production copy received. So cool. Great. Looks like they're very upfront and, and forward with their, their updates. Awesome. So do I want it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. And after seeing you spot like that, I'm actually more excited for the minis than I was before. Like, I, they look good, but let's be honest. We've always seen games where it's like, oh, these minis look good, and then you get them, and they're like, mm, okay. <laughs> We've all had those Kickstarter projects, I think. Um, so seeing that you are, in fact, a minis game company who's now onto the board games, that gets me more excited about the minis. Uh, last unlocks. So, oh, we're talking. We're getting straight into stretch goals. Awesome. I'm even more excited. I still want the price though. Uh, two new miniatures, stage two, first stretch goal. 
Well, stage two, what's that mean? Uh, two new miniatures at 110,000. So we're getting ourselves some micro stretch goals, the kind of stretch goals that you have to check every day, two, three days to see if there's new stuff that's in your game. I like it. And once again, I would almost zoom in a little bit on these. If these are the ones that I'm actually getting, maybe zoom in on them a little bit because if they're that hot minis. After stage five backers, we'll get two different games for just 40. What? After stage five, backers will get two games for just 40. Oh, so they're saying if we hit this crazy high pie in the sky uh, goal of, of stage five, which is at stage one, 70%, then there'll actually be two different games. And you're going to be just getting the absolutely amazing thing. So they're pretty much, you know, saying, hey, we have all this planned out. You could get all this if we get to it, but it's just not feasible to do otherwise. That's that's an interesting approach. I kind of like it. Uh, <laughs> okay, fun in six hours. Thank you for dragging Bond with us. Thank you for not putting that on the main image. I appreciate that. Lords of Valor Dragon, about $49. That's it? Lords of Valor is an asymmetric... Stra so this is $49 plus the expansion? Wow. That was, that was lower than I was expecting. <laughs> uh, I don't think these minis are to scale... Uh, I'd like to know the exact size of as many somewhere. But 60 minutes, one to four players, ages 12 plus. All printed components have text will be available in the following languages. Uh, hopefully there's a long zoomed in scrolling shot as well. And then, wow, you get the expansion. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good deal. Like, I don't typically feel that way about Kickstarter projects, but that's a damn good deal. $49 for this game which I think looks pretty stinking cool as is. So less than MSRP of typically around $60 and you're getting expansion with, uh, is it, is it, is it just minis? It can be its own standalone game. If enough. So no, it's not. So what if we hit enough stretch goals, this could be its own standalone game. What? That's so weird. I love it. It gets me excited, but it's, it's, it's not what I expect to see. Hi, new sub here. This looks cool. Hey, welcome aboard. I'm glad you enjoy the content. Uh, STL plus PDF one print and play. So is this, um, so this is, yeah, this is where they're getting down to the business on the price. I can't, I love this. So do I want it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. How much is it? Right down to the beat with the price. I like the Kickstarter so far. I really, I'm really enjoying this. $49 gets you this in the expansion. That's a, that's a great deal. <laughs> I mean, plus it gets you uh, STL plus PDF one print and play. So if you want the print and play, get it. Play as General or Dragon. Uh, and so now we're going... So this is kind of weird. We're now... We're in the shopping area. I'm in shopping mode right now. And now we're pivoting, kind of just talking a little bit more about the game. But this is, I guess, is you zooming in on the components right here. So technically two games. It'll be two games if they hit a certain amount of cash, which is, is probably a substantial amount if it's, if it's five. Um... Especially with these minis. Wow, these are great minis. And now we're seeing some more of the boards and the components. So early Dragon supporters. So back now and receive three exclusive promo cards. So in addition to the game and the expansion, we're going to get three promo cards. Wow, this is like, this is, woo, this is nice. We firmly believe that everyone supporting the first print run of the game to make it a rally should receive the same benefits. Sometimes, oh, so no. So just for you backing this, you're getting this. Just on Kickstarter, you're going to get these three cards, which will, in theory, not be in further versions of the game. We have already have retailers and distributors working on advanced purchase orders of Lord of Valia. These orders will allow us to put a greater quality in the first print run and reduce the unitary cost per game, which in turn allows us to offer a better pricing for you on Kickstarter. And they're telling us exactly how they can do that spectacular price. I appreciate that because I've seen other Kickstarters where it's like, are you really, are you going to pull the plug on us with like six days left and say, we need to rethink our funding goal because we didn't hit stretch goal X, Y, and Z. Uh, but they're saying, no, we're a pre-established company. We have these connections and we are going to be able to print this cheaply and we're passing the deal on to you, which I love because you know what? Uh, they actually did the same thing for the Assassin's Creed dice game. They said, hey, we're going to print this in such a mass quantity. But then they didn't give you the price break. It was still like a stupidly expensive dice game. But so I love what they're doing here. Follow this project's daily progress on KickTrack. Good. Click on it. And this will also move them up the KickTrack popularity chart. So I just did my part. I helped. Uh, Vala, the preamble force that shapes creation. And, and so we're, we're off of the, we're off the shipping section. I do, or we're off the, uh, the price section now. Is there just the one? Is there just the one pledge level? Is it that clean and clear? Let me get over here. Okay, so we have the $15 STL print, so whatevs, print and play, 70 backers, awesome. And then we have the $49. Oh, no, no, there's more. Okay, 
So this is so this is just it kind of meanders right here. So Lords of Valor is an ace bet. So so once again we t so that was kind of like the featured pledge. I think that's you just you hit me with the price, and then you hit me with like, hey, you're also going to get three cards because that's uh, I would mention that I don't know I would I, that you have it up high, so I'm not going to say that. Uh, kick track, but then we're now back into the theme and the story and the stuff, which is just like, but I want to know about the seventy nine dollars because think about it. You don't want people to back the forty nine dollars, right? You want people to back the seventy nine dollars. So have it. So have it here, because I honestly, from what you showed me there, just thought there was just a forty nine dollar version of it. And now we're on to talking more about the game. Uh, but no, in fact, there is a seventy nine. So maybe spotlight a little bit more. I think I think spotlighting uh, pledge levels is super important. And I and I see this. I see this because I look at tons and tons of different Kickstarters, and there'll be sometimes where I say, "Man, I don't feel like they spotlighted that pledge level enough." And then I go over here and I see, as a result of them not spotlighting it, you know, it's not as popular. And I wonder if that's going to be the case here. But let's get to the seventy nine dollar one. Download World Primer. Choose your allegiance. Cool. Oh, these are. Oh my gosh. Pre <laughs> those if those were pre painted. Whoo. Okay. These are hot gameplay. And okay, we got the millimeters here. Maybe convert to inches for the dumb Americans like me. Uh, but still, I get the. I get it. I get it. This is a big honking freaking man. He's awesome. Gameplay straight to the gameplay. Is this? Nope. This isn't in focus. This is going to be a little interview. Um, looking for a gameplay. Gameplay video. That's what we want. How to play? Wow. What is this? Is this? Woo! This is spectacular. This is just a straight up paid for how to play video. 14 minutes. I didn't know BGG was doing how to plays, but awesome. I'm going to have to check one of those on my next game night. Uh, excellent. That's what I want to see right there. So, quick start and rules, and this is the gameplay. Beautiful. Full gameplay, 36 minutes. That's what I want to see. So, I see the rules. I see it there. I see I can play it on Tabletopia. Excellent. And now we have the presumably long scrolling shot of what's inside the box, which typically. I feel like should lead into your price or be right after your price because that's, you know, that's because, yeah, okay. So we're getting, look at this, nice minis, character card, sweet looking board, and you pay attention to down there because it looks like they're all different, five wound trackers, and then uh, action cards, vala cards, so 11 cards, and then over here you got your 12 different tokens, different things going on. Oh, wait, so maybe the dragons and the humans are different, uh, which makes sense. And then we have over here, because, yeah, look at this board. Whole different board. Yeah, I'm getting some heavy, vast in the Crystal Caverns uh, things here. Message retracted? Oh, no, I wanted to see what it was. Uh, so five, a Lace of Vala, one Tiveria player mat. Okay, so this is cool. Yeah, awesome. And then the big, the bo and they tell me the inches. They tell me the dimensions. Awesome. Wait, did they do? Okay, so, yeah, awesome. Some millimeters and inches, 17 by 33. That's a big honking board. That's, yeah, that's good. That's, that's, a, that's a big one right there. That gets me excited. Okay, rule booklet, 24-page rule booklet. Hopefully I can click on that somewhere, even if it's rough. And if it's rough, you ask. You say, hey, uh, we are, we're currently working on the rule booklet. Please, any feedback is major appreciated. Tear it apart. Let's make it the best possible rule booklet we can or anything like that. Uh, total base game contents, awesome. $49. That's nice. Included for free with every copy of the game, only for Kickstarter backers. So this is, is this just minis? Uh, is it, I'm, I'm wondering if that's like if it replaces tokens or chits or something like that. Okay, so stretch goals. We're on to the stretch goals. Awesome. Yes, Army of Bloods and Dreams is a cosmetic upgrade, but if enough stretch goals are reached, it will become the starter set for a war game. Whoa, that sounds that sounds really interesting. Be prepared for a variety of stretch goals with gameplay options, additional minis, new expansions, and ultimately a new standalone games in Armies of Blood and Dreams for free if enough stretch goals are reached. Now, I, I remember at the very top, the first thing we focused on was the stretch goals. Once again, once your game is funded, it is no longer your goal. You know, you, you have to pivot to not just being focused on getting your game funded, but now trying to get as much money as you can to make your game as best as possibly it can be. Um, so... I know you have focused on the stretch goals at the beginning, but the stretch goals didn't mean much to me because you didn't zoom in on the pictures. I just saw new minis. Maybe this area, like explaining a little bit more about how exciting the stretch goal area is going to be. Like this is going to be a popping spot because we're going to freaking unlock another game for you. Because that's not typically something you hear. So, uh, so these are the ones that have been hit. Two new cards. Awesome, but I'd love to see a little bit more focus on what the cards are, what they do, um, because it, it seems like adding new cards in this game is a big deal. This is not one of those games where it's like, we have 900 cards. No, it looks like well, there's like 60, 70, 80 cards, maybe, uh, in the whole game. So you adding two cards is a big deal. So I, I would maybe spotlight how much of a big deal that is 
uh, a little bit more. Because think about if you've played Vast in the Crystal Cabins, like if there was just like, hey, we're going to add two more cards to the game, you say, whoa, 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 what's, what's, what's that? What's, what's going to happen there? Uh, so we got Infamy Miniature Alternate Pose. Okay, so two new minis. The minis are moving. I thought I was, I thought maybe I was tripping here or something, but no, those minis are moving. That's cool. Oh, and look at this. The lock actually unlocks. That's, oh, that's, that's nifty. All right. Uh, Infinity miniatures. So these are minis for the expansion. Okay. And these are minis for the expansion. Minis. So these are all minis for the expansion, which normally I would not be a fan of. But in this particular instance, everybody gets that expansion. Cool. Um, but here's the other thing though, like still this, ex like that pledge level, I feel like was really malnourished because are we, are we still going to go down there and talk to it? Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, they actually <laughs> did all the different stretch goal currencies on the bottom. That's awesome. Like that, uh, kudos on that. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before. I love that. This is, this is, this is the way stretch goals should be done. This is the way. Remember dollars only mean something to half the people who shop on Kickstarter, the rest of the world, uh, I love that. I lost my track here. All right, but back to where we were. Oh my God, what are these? Okay, so this is where we're gonna get to those expansions and add-ons. Oh my gosh, I don't wanna see it, spoilers. Because I really do, oh wait, there's the pledge levels. And more to come. So now we have a different pledge level area. So they hit me first with the $49 one. Uh, those are gorgeous. So this and that's, and I see this and I say, okay, I, I, I have no qualms with this. The $49 for that, how much is it is not an issue here. But now we're getting to the $79 version, which is going to add... I think this is the one that most people are going to want. Oh, no, because... No, no, this goes, makes it go up to six, five to six players. And here's what I would recommend doing here. I would really spotlight two additional player count up to five to six players and then maybe be honest and let us know what that new time length is and say you know and now it makes it a 75 minute game or an 80 minute game or a 90 minute game mentioning little things like that i think i think it just like like if because if i hear this is a 60 minute game and then i hear it goes to 80 minutes but then i hear it also plays six players i don't bat an eye because let's be honest we've all gotten caught one of those six player games that just drag on for hours Catan, Viticulture. I mean, there's some other games where it's like, dear God, don't even, I just, I, I get bad, bad juju even thinking about playing at six player. So, but, so if that's not the case, spotlight that as well. If it doesn't add a substantial amount of time to the game when you go up to six players, I would, I would be pounding my chest a little bit about that. Uh, and that would also really make this pledge level even hotter. Now, I believe the $99 one, if I was paying attention, makes it so it adds a whole unique different aspect to the game, which is where now you're going to be hunting the monsters as an additional way to score points, an entire new mechanism that you're going to be putting onto the game. And I imagine this, oh no, there's more, there's more, okay, uh, I would totally put this higher. I would put this where you have that $49 one, I think, because... It just it just makes it makes it makes more sense to me, I think. All right, so then we have the hundred and twenty dollar core collection. Now this is everything. It is not everything. So what new is so this is the game. Plus that. We already got that. We got all this. And I do kind of like how they're doing this. No 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 no. Wait, they squeeze one in. They squeeze one in. So this is this is the new thing. So this is the hundred and twenty dollar level. It adds that new thing. Wait, no, what does it add? So these this is the expansion everybody gets. This is this is the monsters. Oh, so this is if you want the monsters, but you don't want to go to five to six players. And once again, if you're going to have this many pledge levels, I would make sure it's very obvious. Like, this is if you want all the game, but for, you know, one to four players. This is if you want to expand it to six players, and this is if you want to do presumably both. Yeah, because this is the game with the expansion everybody gets, with the fifth... So, yeah. So, this is the one if you want to go six-player and you want to have all the new stuff. Then what the hell is this? Oh, this is if you want a gigantic miniature, a one-hard plastic, unpainted, 200 millimeter. Once again, you put 200 millimeters. You converted me to inches earlier. Convert me to inches again. That'd be great. Uh, but either way, I'm assuming it's monstrous, and I don't have an issue with that because people buy that, and, and people don't even think twice about buying that. But it's you're kind of like, okay, I didn't... Once again, I want to go back to five minutes ago where I thought the only pledge level available was the $49 one. You know, so I think the organization, because uh, this is a fun journey. I'm excited. What the hell is possibly going to make it? So $150 extra going from the giant dragon. What do I get here? An even gianter dragon? 
Uh, one 300-page physical adventure book, The Great Worms of Draca. Oh, and three hard plastic, unpainted, gargantuan dragon miniatures. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess that that is not a... You know, I don't even know. Is there another one? No, okay. So we're done. 320 is the max. I'm going to guess that that's not going to be a particularly popular one. But if it is, it's not because of this book. Like, let's be quite frank. It's probably not because of this book. Oh, wait. Does that make it... Wait, are you telling me this now makes it... Is this making it a role-playing game? What the hell? <laughs> I think that's what the 5e means. <laughs> you just kind of sprung that on me. This is... Oh, this is something different. Though. This is the Great Worms of Draca. Is this what it's based off? Once again, you kind of just sprung this on me. I don't know what's going on here. And if I don't know what's going on here, I feel like I'm less likely to back it. Uh, but... I'm very interested to see. So let's just get this. Let's get to the big reveal. Seven, <laughs> seven inches minis, by the way. That is very tall. I just mentioned in the chat. All right. So 15 on the PDF. 425 on the, the, the Lords of Allah. Okay. And I think that's a damn good price. And I think that's such a damn good price that I don't think anybody thinks twice about going $79 so they can make it up to six players. You know, especially if you hit five or six players like I do routinely. I don't even think twice about that uh, for all you're getting. So 95 backers there. And then we have this. So this is if you just want all the gameplay. This is, but minus the four, uh, minus the, but no, even if it does make it five to six players, it also adds two new characters that you get to play at, which in this asymmetric game is a big deal. And I don't, I don't know if that was necessarily spotlighted well enough because I think there's, cause there's, there's levels to this, especially when it comes to asymmetrical games. And I say at the top is games like Vast and the Crystal Cavern. Root leader game style games where it's like every single time you play as a different character, it's a whole freaking different game that you're playing. Um, and if that is in fact what this game is, I might have I might have spotlighted that a little bit more because I see asymmetric, I see asymmetric all the time. I see you know mint tin asymmetric games, but th this this one looks to be one of those ones where it's like different characters will play differently. Uh, maybe spotlight that a little bit more. But seventeen backers, so seventeen backers wanted the one to four player gameplay all in that's really surprising to me that is insanely surprising to me because i feel like that should be a popular stretch level if this is like hey you don't play five and six well no because you still want those two extra characters never mind all right so uh this is the core collection so this is going to be everything minus the giant mini and i think this will be the most popular speculative 320 no it's the 49 dollar one okay uh, so then we have the great, oh, come on. <laughs> I always want to believe that people don't just open their wallets and just start throwing money when they come to Kickstarter. But if this is the most popular pledge level down here, I will have lost hope. All right, so 49, awesome. So 49 people wanted the giant minis, and then 53 people wanted the giant minis, which tells me there's 100 people who just like having these giant things, which is awesome. You know, I have no issues with that. All right. But once again, uh, I think the breakdown of this is really interesting. And I almost wonder if maybe just in the future, uh, going with like just the base game that everything else is add-ons. Well, no, because then you don't get the money up front and you want to hit all the different stretch goals. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So now we, and now more, so now we got the pledge levels. Uh, okay, which we already went through. Awesome. What's after pledge levels? You gave me everything I want. I think I want except for the shipping. Oh, and now we're zooming in on the wool. Okay. So this so this is what the expansion looks like. So this is the first time I think we've really been zoomed in on it. This is the free one we're getting. And those are really good looking damn minis. Wow. That's a cool mini. Oh, man. Uh, and a lore book. Wait, we so we get a lore book free? Is the lore book, is that, is that the 5e thing? Learn more about the realms of people of Valeria with beautiful art in the lore book. No, so okay, so this is just the rule book. It's not a rule booklet, it's a booklet of lore. I don't have an issue with that. And then this is the new playable characters. If you also bumps it up to five and six players uh, with their own unique minis and boards. Do they have their own boards? They don't have their own boards. Oh yeah, they do. They have the player map. Okay. So, and see, this is what I'm talking about here. It feels odd that we're seeing such a spotlight on these here. When I've like I'm like I I saw the price like, uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting choice to put it there. I don't I don't. So oh wait. So this is the one that makes it five e, six unique creatures with a couple of huge miniatures. So what is five e? Expansions for Lords of Valhalla, but also includes 
five E stat plots. So this is something that can be integrated into a, a role playing game. Now, I'm not a role player, but I know a lot of the people I play games with are role players, and this I think would be very exciting. Um, uh, and so maybe maybe a little bit more of a spotlight on what exactly that means. Because I don't feel like I've really gotten a good idea of what that is. Because this Kickstarter, it is throwing everything against the wall. And I love that. I love that it's got all these crazy different ideas. I just think uh, maybe Spotlight presenting them. So what is... Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> I love the outline. That looks great. And very, very cool. Diameters is... So now we're talking about the bottom bases. And these are add-ons. So we can't get add-ons. Oversized color rubber mat. Oh, wow. And here's the thing. I almost wonder if a whale, if a whale would have been the way to go and just include all this, all this stuff. Like if you want all this, that's the, uh, the $600 one, but I guess they were the, oh, but you can still get the gigantic minis on the side. Cool. Awesome. Those look great. And then we have, here we go. So here's the hardcover book that lets you play it as a role play game. And now you're telling me more information on it. But once again, I, like it just I feel like it should be interweaved in with the shopping section and then oh my goodness this is great like this is awesome but it's so it's super low uh so the base game gets you so 49 bucks the expansion and this is clean and clear available as an add-on for 30 this is good it's a little it's just a little small text to read but I love this general graph right here like that that reward table is a nice clean clear one maybe a little bit more information uh, of just a base what it does so legends of Lerna five to six player slash Two new, completely asymmetric characters. Creatures of the Lerna. Whole new mechanism. Capture the monsters. Like, that sort of thing. And then we have reviews. Okay. Got no issues. It's a deeply strategic, but just exceptionally fun game. It doesn't feel fiddly or overly cluttered. It's just pure, streamlined strategy. Some of the coolest minis I've seen in a very long time. That's a great quote. Because, once again, I've been comparing it to Vast and the Crystal Caverns quite frequently. That's the vibe I got from this game. And if you've ever played it, you know it is insanely fiddly. And it can be very cluttered. Especially when you mix in more and more and more and more stuff. So, that quote right there, just cutting through the fat and saying it's not fiddly or cluttered. I like that. I like that quote a lot. I love fantasy role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons. Dragon Ball Lord of Valor has a couple ways to scratch this itch. You've got gritty dice rolling combat, players politicking, and very strategic decision making. This game has really beautiful art style, very elaborate dragons. Damn, that's another banger of a quote. Uh, I agree. It's hard to tell what gameplay stuff you're getting when looking at the pledge tier, so that is maybe why the base level is the most popular. And yeah, that's what I was just saying. Like, I feel like you want to spotlight what you want most people to get. Now, if I go down to that $49 pledge level, like, that's still a damn good deal, but, like, I just... I feel like you have a lot of great stuff going for you in this campaign, though. I love the asymmetric aspect of Dragonborn's Lizard of Valor, since playing as a general dragon is like playing two different games with a different strategy and tactics necessary to win. Don't pass on this great game. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> that's what I want to know. So... Playing as a dragon versus playing as a human, completely different feel. And I'm assuming maybe even from one human to one human, from one dragon to one dragon, will not completely reinvent the wheel, like be, but it will feel familiar but different, which that sounds awesome. Preview score, 9 out of 10. I'm really excited for this one. I will definitely be back in the game, and I feel that if you like dragons and magic games, then you need to back this one. Lord Zavala has tons of potential, plays really well, can be fairly simple to learn, and offers some great strategic thinking. Solid quote. Uh, we got a preview... Two-player gameplay. Excellent. Full two-player gameplay. Awesome. I think this is really novel. I'm very charmed and fascinated by this game. I would honestly have some of these quotes a little bit higher, too, because I think these, some of these quotes are just such bangers. You know, because if you just put the... You don't necessarily have to... Having the quote near it is great, but I think I think a couple quotes on top just to wet the whistle. It's just good. I think this is really novel. I'm very charmed and fascinated by this game. I love the aesthetic. I like the art. I like the minis. Eh. Uh, so, here we go. Shipping. We ship the Stonemeyer way. Be still my beating heart. I guess I should actually be beating faster when I say it like that. Because when you say that, I immediately know you know your shit. Like, it's like, okay, they're not screwing around. They did the research. They put in the time. They put in the effort. So I think just mentioning that, even if you were lying, it still just makes you look better. <laughs> you just name dropped. And I love it. Uh, we ship, I, like, name dropping at Kickstarters. I love it. We ship with the Stone Meyer way with different fulfillment hubs around the world, so most of our backers don't pay customs bills to receive their rewards. No vat. Uh, and they're even giving me the behind the scenes stuff that I don't even, like, awesome. They're telling me exactly where it comes through. Excellent. $15. 
Diggity, diggity, dog. That's a, that's a, so $64 out the door for this game and the expansion. I got no issues with that. Now, that being said, uh, oh, that's just for the base. Hopefully you have the information about if you didn't just get the base. Because once again, and here's another thing. We, the base is the most popular pledge level, but you don't want the base to be the most popular pledge level. You want the base to be the fall down. We're like, all right, you know, I've been burned too many times on Kickstarter. I'm not going to go for the 100, the 120, but I'll get that $49 version. Uh, because I don't even think that people think twice about that. Like, they're so used to paying one to two to $300 for Kickstarters, $49 for this game. It's like, okay, so I would have the shipping for all the different pledge levels. I know it's inconvenient, but... But if you're going to put that many pledge levels, you kind of need to do it. Especially if you want, like, at, at the very minimum, you should have the core collection. The core collection should have its own shipping spot. Loctox stock, two smoking barrels, no arguments about that. I don't think anybody would argue about that. Because that's what you want people to get. That's what people would want to get. You know, if I don't want giant, you know, giant dragons sitting around, I don't have room for that. Uh, I want this game, and I want everything in this game. I want to be able to play it up to five to six players, and I want to have all, all the different pieces and all the different cards. That one has to have its own separate shipping area, I do believe. So $50, 34 13 and these look like pretty dang reasonable shipping. Yeah, especially, yeah, no issues with this at all. And here's the other thing. I don't have a firm grasp on how large this box is, and normally I just kill companies for that. But your price and your shipping is so well done that it's like, it's like, like I, I don't even care. Still, being said, I would like to know the size of your box. So maybe include that, uh, like a picture, a mock-up of what the box is going to look like. Because I don't think I've seen that. I'll scroll back up a little bit, but I don't think we've seen it. All right, so we see the timeline right here. Uh, so my, uh, my knee-jerk reaction to this, because I always do a grading system, A through F. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Do I want it? Yeah, I feel like the video was well done enough. It was started off a little bit slow, uh, but I feel like it was a well done video. It got me excited about the game. Can you do it? Yes, you have the pedigree. I might lean more into that once again, how you are, in fact, a minis maker who's now dipping your toes into the board game market. Uh, because I hear, it's just, when I hear a minis game company is doing minis versus I hear a board game company is doing minis, the minis that I dream up in my mind are different minis. And, and, and as Kickstarter backers, I think we would all pretty much agree with that because we've seen some companies where it's like, yeah, we can tell you're not a minis company. So I would spotlight that a little bit more. And that also, le that really helps with the, can you do it? And then how much is it? I feel like it's a damn fine price. So right now, I'm leaning towards an A minus. I feel like there's a lot of organization issues in the Kickstarter. I feel like some things are not spotlighted enough or where they, where they where they ideally should be. But everything else, like everything that you want on a Kickstarter page, like this is great. Uh, so what is this? Our universe projects timeline. Oh, is this? What is this? Um, so this looks like definitely so Stone Myers fingers on it because if you ever seen one of the Stone Myers one, they have this big elaborate graph that shows you exactly how far along everything is and all the different games and uh, they even mentioned like undeveloped projects. Like we're forty four percent of the way through undeveloped projects. This guy is so clever. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have burned that bridge, damn it. Uh, Lord, I, I didn't do it in a bad way, by the way. It was just I, I broke an NDA on accident. But Lords of Valor, Great Worms of Drac. I don't want it to be like there's some controversy or something. There's not. Dragons of the Red Moor, uh, Battles of Valerna. What is it? I don't know what this... So this is this is this is previous stuff that you've done? Like, as someone who doesn't know your previous stuff, this doesn't mean anything to me, uh, except for this part. Um, so, June 2022, so we're looking at a Gen Con Origins release time frame. I got no issues with that. That seems perfectly reasonable. Uh, and then we also have our, our universe. So these are... I'm assuming this is more aimed at the people who are are coming back from different projects, what I'm trying to say here. Because I think these are their previous games. All fulfilled, all fulfilled, all fulfilled. Uh, so March 2022. Oh, so what I think what this is telling us, I'm trying to read this, is that one of their games is not out. But it's, it's not... I, I love the fact that they're trying to do this. I just don't think this is the cleanest way to do it. Uh, licenses? What is this? Uh, what, I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> Check our 3D printable models at my mini factory. Okay, cool. Awesome. About us. Uh, drag game designs. And I can tell, I can tell there's a team here. There is so much polish on this project. Uh, our Discord, our Facebook, our Twitter, our website, yada, 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 yada. It looks good. I'm thinking an A minus here. Let's go check out the updates, the comments, make sure they're not a flaming dumpster fire. That's correct. We want to show tr full transparency on our projects outside Dragon Bond. Awesome. Um, 
maybe just say, hey, here's are some of our other projects. If you really like our, just tell, give me just a little brief glimpse at what the hell I'm looking at there. Will there be a pledge manager where I can play Lords of Valor? How do I pledge? Why? Okay. So it looks like a pretty typical FAQ. It doesn't look like it's comprehensive. It doesn't have as much. But as always, I recommend everybody go check out Reload from Colossal Games and how they run their uh, FAQ section because I think it is hands down the best. Okay. Do not like this. This is a bad update. Oh, it's, oh the updates are so bad. Oh, God, the updates. Uh, so you have 1,113 people here. You put in an update three days ago and no one commented on me. Uh, that's, 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 that's a bad update. Because at the end of the day... This project, this project has massive potential, I think. Like, I don't think anybody would argue that this thing, like, if it, if it, like, if Tom Vassell just tweeted one day, he was like, oh, damn, this looks so hot. I don't know, you wouldn't do that. But this thing would explode, and they would hit all their different things, and it'd be cool. I think they have that potential, but you gotta get yourself bumped up higher, because right now this is ranked as the 15th most popular uh, project in games. And the further you fall down, the less likely people are to just stumble onto your project. And the way you're gonna do that is by having engaging updates and comment section where people are going to comments, because that's how you get up higher, because you you got you got a really cool stretch goal area. You got something different. You got something unique going on down here. You got lots of good stuff, but you didn't end with a question. I can guarantee you, you did not end with a question because someone would have responded to you uh, because, you know, they're spoken down $120, well, $49. Hello, Dragon Bond. We're delighted to read your excitement in the comment section. Please keep the questions, suggestions, ideas, or general discussion coming. So they're saying, hey, keep talking. Awesome. Today's Lords of Valor entered into the hottest top 10 list of Board Game Geek. This is great to help the game get more exposure. Awesome. If you haven't, you can subscribe to Lords of Valor and Board Game Geek to be notified about the new threads, reviews, or images uploaded. If you put it here, I will do it because I love to do this kind of stuff and I love this project. More exposure means more backers, therefore more stretch goals unlocked. And if we complete all five stages of stretch goals, your copy of Armies, Bloods, and Dreams will become a standalone game so you will get two different Dragon Bond games at just $49. That's so cool. Uh, so what's the status of the stretch goals stages now and, and now that we are 200% funded? So you just finished unlocking stretch goals stage one. One, the first stretch goal includes eight new upgraded cards, more player options, and ways to interact with the units. Your copies of Lords of Adela includes 10 Alarian units and 10 Tilvarian units, a total of 20 upgrade cards. Let's talk about... So that's exciting. Like, I will be quite frank with you. Just this one sentence right here got me more excited about your stretch goals than I think most of what you showed me in the actual stretch goal area there. Uh, maybe, maybe that's just me. So now we're getting a little bit into the details about all the different stretch goals and we're going into the theme. Cool. Whatevs. Artwork. And, and this has got to be, and here's, oh man, I feel bad saying this is a bad update, but it is. Because at the end of the day, the whole point of the update is to tickle that Kickstarter algorithm. I mean, it's, it's to keep people informed, but at the end of the day, if you're going to have a project near the top, and what is this? This is a whole video. In case you missed a live stream from earlier today, awesome. This is them playing it on Tabletop Simulator. Excellent. Great. A full gameplay. But no comments because you didn't ask for comments. You just showed us a bunch of really cool stuff. So the only comment would be like, oh, wow, this looks great. Keep up the great work. You know what? As someone who runs a YouTube channel, that is not the comments that you typically get. You get them, you get them smattered throughout. But most of the time, it's, it's nothing at all or negativity unless you ask for people to talk. So you gotta, you gotta. Next update. Next update. Which uh, which unit are you most excited? Or like, what play style do you think is going to fit your personal thing? Or what game does this remind you of? Or where do you think, you know, what do you think we could do to best get out the buzz so we can create two games for $49? $49. Anything like that. Get your audience engaged. Because I see two updates right here. Uh, same day. Post two updates. Nobody responded to either of them. Uh, and okay. Okay. This one, and yeah, two comments. Two comments, and I'm going to get, I'm going to be, this is you responding to the comment. Yeah, so one comment in the updates the entire time you've been up, which has been, uh, what, four, five days? That's, that's not going to do it. Like, you could do everything super good, but at the end of the day, you got to get those update section, the comment section, percolating and popping. So, totally, I feel like you have some amazing information in that update. Uh, that was just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, if I read through all that stuff, if I actually went through all that stuff and you asked me a question, you better damn well believe I'm probably going to answer that question because I am totally into what you're doing. So 
Highly recommend that. Hi, team of Draco Studios. I already saw a comment about the Pledge Manager, but I have additional questions. Do you already have an idea of how long the Pledge Manager will remain open? Will we pay directly for the Pledge Manager at the moment you close it? I'm asking this because of the budget that I need for my pledge. Okay. Some in the weeds questions. Alrighty then. And I'm going to guess that sounds more like someone who's a newer member to the hobby. So let's see how many new people we got on here, actually. So, 23 new backers, primarily people who already know how to use Kickstarter. And once again, I love this community section. You can always see here, I would say it, 444 United States, next lowest, Germany. Uh, but where, 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 so comments, wow, this is really cool. And also the first time I've heard of this, why isn't Alistair's name written in bold letters all over the Kickstarter page? He's a living legend. He's the busiest factor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alessio? Who's Alessio? What is Alessio? Uh, Alessio's uh, board game. Because don't, because I saw this with Earthborn. Uh, a top 50, uh, so what is, is Alessio, Alessio Cavatori. Oh my God, I love having chat. You are all amazing. Because now I'm not just fumbling here trying to uh, fit in filler words. I'm looking at Alessio Cavatori's Wikipedia page because he is a big board game per creator. Uh, so what games has he done? Loku, the Waterloo, Terminator Genesis, the miniatures game, Jin's Hens, the Labyrinth, but so My Little Ponies, Tale of Equestria, the Storytelling. So he's got games. Yeah, like if, if someone has a pre installed fan base. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Wikipedia. Gear. So what are we talking about? Top. So yeah, we got we got three games in the top 3,000. That's, 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 that's insanely impressive. So every single game. Oh, 78 games. Oh, my. Yes. Yes, you need to be spotlighting this. Holy guacamole. 78 games and a huge chunk of them in the top 3,000. Let's, let's order this by this, this ranking right here. Uh, because, yeah, I want to see what the... the uh, wait, how do I sort them by rank? Yeah, let's see. What's the top? They got one in the top? Yeah, so 1397, 2544, 2752, 3354, 33. So you could say, uh, like, he's got... 10 games in the top 5,000 almost. That's huge. That is massive. That is... Uh, he also did a cameo on Lords of the Rings, The Return of the King. What? That's awesome as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Cool behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah, I would spotlight that as well. Uh, any... There is so much good going for this game. This is an interesting campaign. That is Dragon Bond Lords of Valor. I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. Let me know what you think in the comments down below because it always makes these videos better and you can help tickle my YouTube algorithm. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Have a great weekend. Wait, no, that's not, that's not how I end it. I go here, right? Yeah, there we go. Bye-bye. <laughs>